Sometimes you got to check in on the two-time defending national champions. Just make sure everything's okay. Everything's still uh, running smoothly. I think it is. We got Anthony Dasher here. We appreciate him jumping on board. You can catch his work on UGASports.com. That's on Rivals. Anthony, what's going on? Uh, just kind of getting ready to work into the summer months here. Uh, you know, football, as you know, is a 12-month-a-year deal anymore. So uh, still plenty to keep uh, keep up with. Well, the last time we talked to Georgia football with you was leading into the NFL draft, and then it wasn't too surprising that uh, last weekend we saw more Georgia Bulldogs, along with Alabama, come off the board than any team in college football. And then you put that together with the 15 that came off the board the previous draft, and it's a record for two drafts consecutively. So, you know, this just speaks to what Kirby Smart took over from Mark Richt and then elevated Mm. beyond that in terms of just producing NFL uh, talent like nobody pretty much. Yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, we, we've talked, I know several times about the job coach Martin and his staff have done recruiting and it's really gotten to the point where they're, you know, just able to, if somebody comes out of the lineup, they are able to put somebody in who's really, you know, at least athletically just as, just as good. And a lot of times all these guys need a little bit of experience. And we saw that last year with some of these kids coming in and, and really kind of stepping up their game and, and next year, you know, I expect the same. Georgia loses some, obviously, some very good players. You know, Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, but they've got guys on the squad right now who they think they can step in and do the job as well. Uh, Anthony, was there anybody taken in the draft that you think was maybe a little lightly regarded, or is there anybody in particular that you think, <clears throat> sure, they had a good college career, but really, their game suits for the NFL, and you you are interested to see how well they make an impact at the next level. You know, I, I don't know. I, every, everybody kind of went kind of where I thought they would go. Actually, I mean, I, if anybody maybe surprised me a little bit, maybe we maybe it was Stetson Bennett to a certain extent going in the fourth round because I think a, a lot of projections that I saw having going, you know, sixth or seventh. But that just speaks to, you know, what the Rams thought of a, a Stet to, you know, pick him in the fourth round like they did. Now we either, you know, joins Matthew Stafford, another former Bulldog in that Rams locker room. So that's going to be interesting to see what, what happened. But, you know, otherwise, no, I don't, I don't think so. I know. A lot, there was a lot of talk, you know, going in about Jalen Carter and, you know, his, his, his arrest and, and all that. You know, that the char- those charges were, you know, he pleaded no contest to him. And he still went in the, in the, you know, within the top 10 pick, went number nine to, to Philly, as, you know, we all know. So I don't know if I really would count that as a as a big surprise. But, but no, I think everybody went pretty much where I thought they would go. I'm not betting against Stetson Bennett. I'm going to be the last no. guy to do that. I, I think, I <laughs> hope everybody out there has learned their lesson. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, no question about that. I mean, he's still uh, was been on Twitter this morning. He's still got a lot of people out there in football land who are, you know, doubting what Stetson can do. But no, no, that again, been covering the sport a long time. Now, I've been covering Georgia football a long time, and you know, his story is one that's you know be talked about and written about, you know, for for years and years to come. And definitely not. I mean, I, if I was the Rams or their fans, I'd be very excited about having him on my team right now because all the guy does is win. Anthony Dasher is here at the Voice of College Football to talk up the Bulldogs. You can catch his work at UGASports.com right there on the banner, uh, Georgia Football on Rivals. And, you know, we see a direct correlation. I had a back and forth with somebody the other day that was like, you know, you can keep your four and five stars. I'd rather have hardworking three stars. Uh, It's like four and five stars can't work hard. Mm. (laughs) Well, there's a direct correlation between recruiting in the NFL draft and then the wins and the championships in the middle. Uh, All you have to do is look at Georgia and Alabama and Ohio state. And they're pretty much the three best examples, but even beyond Mm -hmm. that, and it's, it's obvious. Well, in the middle, you got to spend money to recruit. And it was released uh, just here in the last week or so, uh, the recruiting budgets for the various college football teams. And Georgia's number one at 4.51 million Maybe it's a lot of those trips out to the West Coast to grab guys like Brock Bowers. I don't know, but uh, just your your response to uh, some of the numbers that have been released? Not shocked at all. I mean, in fact, we did some a study ourselves. It's been a couple of years ago, and Georgia's really been the number one team as far as uh, being willing to spend on recruiting as anybody in, in the country, really, since Coach Smart, you know, has been there. You know, Georgia is now a, a national brand, and to be a national brand, you've got to go all over the country to recruit, and they're recruiting. You know, kids from all corners uh, of the United States, you know, right now. Uh, so, uh, so to hear that's right now is at 4.5 million absolutely does not 
surprised me at all. And, uh, you know, and you talk about the, you know, having four and five star kids and some, some schools really have the three and four. I guarantee you coach Moore would love to play those teams every year to kind of, you know, <laughs> get through a, through a season. But, uh, but no, you've got to have the Jimmies and Joes and to get the Jimmies and Joes, you've got to go out and see them. And that's what George is doing by spending all this money. And folks out there will bring up the, the three stars that come through and become great players. Sure, they yes. Do. Absolutely. It's not every player comes through as a four or five star and then the three stars don't get, but the yeah. last volume obviously proves out. I saw this number in the last year, five stars make NFL rosters almost 45% of the time, mm -hmm. four stars. It's more like 12 to 14% and three stars. It's like three or 4%. So that pretty much shows you. Yeah, you know, you, you see those examples, but, but just because you're a three-star doesn't mean you're a very, very good high school football player. I mean, what is the percentage, again, sure. of how many kids in high school go on to play college ball at any level? And it's going to be something like 4 or 5%, even maybe even a little less you know, than that. So, uh, you know, it's um, it, 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 so just because somebody is a three-star kid, that doesn't mean by any stretch you can't go and be a very good football player. But – on the same hand, if you get these guys who are four and five stars, these elite, elite athletes, they're going to make a huge difference if they're willing to put in the work to go with the talent. This is the time of year that uh, people get their their gambling set up for the college football season to a certain mm -hmm. extent in regards to the uh, early lines for the particular games and then, of course, the win totals. I looked back on a video that I shot last year and my suggestion to people, and I'm not an odds maker, I'm not a handicapper by any stretch, but my suggestion was Georgia, Ohio State, and Michigan were all at 10 and a half. And I said, why don't you just take that three pack over because I can't believe that they won't hit two out of three at least, and then yeah. you're going to win money. And lo and behold, Georgia and Michigan go 12 and 0, and Ohio State goes 11 and 1. So they all went over 10 and a half. I thought that was a fairly easy play. Uh, Georgia this year is at 11 and a half. So it's basically, you know, Vegas is not going to put anybody at 12, but this is almost as much <laughs> uh, a play to say they're, they're going to go undefeated. Just try to find where they're going to trip up uh, yeah. this season. So they're at 11 and a half. Yeah. And uh, you look at Georgia's schedule this year, of course, uh, people want to make a big deal about Georgia's non-conference schedule, which again, right now, it, you know, it's up, you know, look, on paper, it's, it's pretty weak. I mean, Georgia had to, had to bring in ball state to play because the conference, the SEC made Georgia, you know, cancel the game with Oklahoma. So Oklahoma's coming to the league as we, you know, we later learn it's going to be next season. So because and because George would not have been able to have a return game to complete the contract. Same thing with Tennessee too. Tennessee had a serious schedule. Oklahoma as well had to cancel and they had to find a new new opponent. So the non-conference portion of Georgia's schedule is, is, is really pretty weak this year. But the conference play again, you've got the, some games that you know could be tough. I mean, the one against Tennessee, I think, is going to be the one everybody will be pointing to. You know, late November, a trip up to Knoxville. I would guess that would probably be a maybe be a night game. Uh, if you ever been to Knoxville at night, that's a pretty uh, intimidating environment. So I think that line on that game right now, as we talked earlier, is around seven seven points right now. But that I think, uh, at least uh, what the prognosticators are suggesting, that's going to be Georgia's most difficult game. I probably would agree with them right now. So Anthony, these are the ones that have been released by DraftKings that I'm looking at for this season. Mm -hmm. Kentucky goes to Georgia. Of course, that was a 10 point game and a kind of a sloppy rain soaked mm -hmm. game last year, but Kentucky at Georgia, 24 points. Got uh, Georgia, Florida, of course, neutral site, 20 and a half. Uh, as you mentioned, Georgia, seven and a half point pick at Tennessee won that game by, I don't remember the score now, 27, 14, I think sounds mm -hmm. right uh, at home against Tennessee last year. And then a 24 point pick against South Carolina. Do any of those, Jump out at you? Uh, maybe the South Carolina game to a, a little extent since, uh, you know, considering they they beat, you know, Tennessee, you know, last year, if they can come in and play with Clemson. that same kind of energy. I mean, who who knows? Maybe, but the game's in Athens, so I really don't, you know, think, you know, Carolina will win or the point spread goes. You know, we'll have to kind of wait and see on that. But otherwise, I mean, Florida is because it, it continually seems like with a, you know, Rebuilding, but they've got a new quarterback. Kentucky is going to have a new quarterback. Uh, but it's a, probably again the Tennessee game. I think will be difficult. You know, will be difficult because it's in Knoxville, and, and we're really not sure about Auburn right now. I know you didn't mention the Auburn game as far as the spreads go, but you know, with Hugh Freeze coming in and his uh, 
you know, reputation as an offensive coach. You know, maybe that game could be difficult. That game's in Auburn this year, so that one could be a one to watch. But uh, Georgia, it's all, all going to depend, I think, on, on the quarterback situation. We've talked about before Carson Beck, uh, who I think is going to be the starter next year, could come and perform like he's capable of. And Georgia is not going to skip a beat. But if he struggles and they have to go another direction, you know, Georgia's offense obviously will not be as a is a crisp as maybe it was a, a season ago with Stetson Bennett. So those are some questions that still need to be answered. But but on paper right now, I mean, I I like where Georgia sits. Obviously, uh, as I look ahead to next year. Yeah, maybe I'm expecting a little bit out of Hugh Freeze his first year because sometimes it takes, you know, a full season to turn over the roster and everything. But I I was looking at them recently, 15 transfers. Uh, They picked up some really good players uh, on the defensive side of the ball from other teams in the Mm -hmm. SEC, from Ole Miss, Kentucky. Peyton Thorne, of course, signed just here a couple days ago from Michigan State. He had a good two-year run at Michigan State, led them to a top-10 finish a couple years ago. He's not a great quarterback, but he's he's good. He's going to make the right decisions. He's mobile. So they they might be able to cause a stir and and give some people some problems uh, this year. All right, Anthony Dasher, UGASports.com on Rivals. Catch his work right there. Anthony, we always appreciate you stopping by. We'll do it again.